Hi everyone, Knoopsy here, and the iPhone 13 mini is a very special device. In a world of massive flagship phones, finding a small phone with top-of-line specifications, a great camera setup, and solid battery life is almost next to impossible in 2021, likely going into, well, 2022. But the iPhone 13 mini breaks through and delivers almost all of those things in its tiny form factor, which is one of its biggest features. This is my review. Okay, so the design of this phone is just like the regular iPhone 13, but smaller. It's made of aluminum with a glossy glass panel on the back that picks up a whole lot of fingerprints, but at least it's lightweight, water and dust resistant, has excellent loud, clear speakers, face ID which is fast and accurate as long as you're not wearing a mask, and the whole face ID system is in a smaller notch this year, but still looks a little bit big on this tiny screen. Apple didn't mention this, but MagSafe also feels stronger on this device as well, and some accessories feel like they attach with double the strength versus last year's iPhone 12. And you'll learn why this extra magnetic strength is important later on in this video. But all those points I just mentioned are kind of the standard iPhone 13 details. All those devices share those design traits. What's interesting though is the actual form factor of the Mini. The buttons are in the perfect place you rest your fingers, no stretching required. You can actually reach all the corners of the 5.4 inch display very easily with one hand. The phone fits in any pocket really, even a shirt pocket, with ease. It even gives the Galaxy Z Flip a run for its money for portability. And as a traditionally big phone user, it took me a second to really get used to using a phone this tiny, but I fell in love. Having a phone that you don't have to worry about it falling out of your pocket or fitting in your pocket or worrying about dropping it while you're using it because it's so big is a wonderful thing. And while the 5.4 inch display, while not 120 hertz, it's 60 hertz, still looks and feels beautifully smooth. The display gets bright with gorgeous accurate colors, it's super crisp and sharp, and as I mentioned, it's 60 hertz, but it feels incredibly smooth. Apple knows how to do 60 hertz displays, and it's a great experience here regardless. And despite being a small display, things still look excellent on this panel. Text is sharp and crisp, everything scales well, and while I probably wouldn't watch a full-length movie or type out a long email on this phone, that's not really what this device is for. This is a device for someone who consciously chooses a smaller phone because they know what they're going to use it for, just like someone who chooses a Pro Max is more inclined to spend more time and do more things on their big screened device. So definitely the size of the mini is the big feature of this device, and the regular 13 is $100 more with a 6.1 inch display and a bigger battery, but everything else is basically the same. Okay, let's talk cameras. So up front there's a 12 megapixel selfie camera that takes some pretty great selfies overall. The iPhone 13 mini also shoots 4K video with a selfie camera as well, which you're seeing right now, and you're hearing the audio quality from this phone too. And this is cinematic mode with the front-facing camera in 1080p. As you can see, I can move around, it tracks my face, while the background stays nice and blurred. Pretty cool. While at the back, there are two cameras. Both are 12 megapixels, and one is a standard wide camera with an f1.6 aperture, as well as an ultra-wide camera with an f2.4 aperture and 120-degree field of view. And the image processing between the ultra-wide and main camera is very consistent, so it looks like you're shooting with one camera and two different lenses rather than two different cameras, which, I mean, you are doing. Photos between these two cameras are stunning. There's incredible color and dynamic range, photos are sharp and detailed. I mean, look at these examples, they're absolutely beautiful. Overall, photos are awesome. Shots at night are very nice as well, especially with Apple's night mode. The Pro Series definitely has brighter cameras and bigger sensors, so if you take a lot of night shots, those phones are the move. But here, on the regular 13 mini, the night photos are still quite good. You may have to hold still for a second or two for night mode to do its thing, but once it's done, you get nice detailed results that are bright and quite sharp. The ultra-wide camera does struggle a bit though in low light, but still, results can be a bit passable. Now, if you're not really a fan of how iPhones process photos, you can also use the new photographic styles mode that lets you set picture profiles based on your preferences. These are not filters though, so if you shoot with a picture profile, you can't revert your image back after you shoot it because all the details are baked into the shot. 
It's a pretty cool feature, but not really something I've really dived into that much. 4K video is one of the great hallmarks of iPhone cameras, and here, it's awesome. It's smooth and stable, dynamic range is on point, colors are beautiful, shots are crisp, detailed, audio sounds great. Honestly, Apple's video recording is the best in the game on its iPhones. In cinematic mode, the brand new feature for iPhones this year adds a whole new dimension. It creates a faux depth of field and background blur for people and simple objects, and it works good a lot of the time, but for certain things, it just kind of falls apart, mostly with more complex objects and scenes. The way I see it, it's a creative tool that works really well for certain scenarios and shots, and for other things, just skip it. It's a cool feature nonetheless, but I hope it evolves a bit more over time. Being able to have all of this camera power and versatility in such a small, compact form factor is one of the best features of the 13 mini. And speaking of power, let's talk performance. This tiny iPhone packs some serious power. Inside, the A15 Bionic processor isn't drastically different on paper versus the A14, but it is incredibly fast. And if you're coming from an older iPhone, or even a lot of Android phones, you're going to really notice the speed difference on this device. It's super quick. The phone has 4GB of RAM versus 6GB in the Pro Series iPhones this year, but despite that, multitasking, switching between apps, opening apps, gaming, it's all very nice and smooth on this phone. Long story short, the 13 Mini and all the 13 Series devices this year are incredibly quick. You are not going to be disappointed with speed this year by any means. They're very fast devices. And with these specifications, they're going to stay fast for many years and also get many years of software updates as well. Okay, so the elephants in the room, battery life. Now, battery life varies person to person, of course, as we all use our phones differently, but last year's 12 mini was universally not good for battery life. It barely lasted me a full day of usage, and I often found myself having to charge it up around mid-afternoon to get through the rest of a day. So finally testing out the 13 mini with Apple's claimed improved battery life, I was definitely impressed. So I start most days at around 7am and I'm right on my phone using it first thing in the morning. Watching videos, taking phone calls, typing up emails, taking a lot of photos and videos, using a mix of Wi-Fi and 5G. And most days I had to stop and charge my phone at around 6.30 or 7 o'clock ish in the evening if I knew I had a longer night ahead. This is on an average day and honestly that is much better than last year and it is decent battery life. It's not amazing battery life but considering my heavier usage it is quite impressive. But on those super busy days where I'm using my phone a whole lot, taking a bunch of videos in 4K, shooting photos, using 5G, Google Maps, I end up with a pretty low battery in the late afternoon. But this year we have MagSafe batteries of course, which changed the entire experience of the iPhone 13 mini. Now if I'm out and about and away from a charger, I just slap on one of these MagSafe batteries, this one's from Anchor, and it keeps me going throughout my day. I'll link in the description. But no matter which MagSafe battery pack you choose, they absolutely change the game with these devices. And with the stronger MagSafe connection this year, you can confidently slap on one of these battery packs, keep going without worrying it's going to fall off during your daily usage. So in the end, battery life is certainly much better on the iPhone 13 mini. It's not like Pro Max level battery life, but I feel much more confident using this phone without worrying it's going to die like midday. And if it gets close to death on a busier day, MagSafe battery pack, slap it on, we're good to go. So that's the iPhone 13 mini. It's a very unique device, especially in the current smartphone market, but if you're looking at this phone, you probably know exactly why you're buying it. And it fits very well into Apple's lineup of iPhone 13s this year, where there's quite a range of devices for everyone. The 13 mini is for someone who is sick and tired of the big phone lifestyle. Maybe a minimalist who wants tech to be at its most compact, simplest form. Someone who wants their phone to fit in their life rather than having to accommodate for a massive device. And this phone doesn't disappoint. 
Besides a few extras the pros have like 120 hertz, more premium materials, and a few more camera features, the Mini seriously delivers in a more compact form factor. The extremely compact flagship smartphone market is something Apple pretty much dominates at this point. There is really no other modern smartphone that offers this much, especially this good of a camera experience, in this small of a form factor with actually decent battery life and the power to extend that battery life easily as well. The 13 Mini this year is well worth considering. Now before you leave, one small note that might be important. Based on some recent rumors, this might be the last mini iPhone we get. The 2022 iPhone 14 lineup actually might drop the mini completely from the series altogether. Now maybe this mini form factor will become the next iPhone SE with some downgrades, but who knows what's going to happen. So while I'm not saying the mini form factor is like totally dead after this year, it might be the last flagship mini we get, which is kind of sad, but we'll have to wait and see. So what do you think of the iPhone 13 mini? Do you plan to buy one this year? Do you think the upgrades are worth it? Are you going to skip it this year? Do you own one? What has your experience been like so far if you have this phone? Let me know in the comments down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.